clickety clack, clickety clack. Such a nice sound, isn't it? Rail joints should be nice and neat on the big railway and on model railways, but sometimes you get a gap that's just a bit too big. Recently, while I've been rebuilding the layout, I came across this problem. A diamond crossover with two points attached, both the same size, and then off the toe of that point, two more points and another diamond crossover. Now try this for yourselves. It, they won't match up. The far track will not match up. There'll be a gap of about 10 millimeters. Sometimes, like this, I think some of the workarounds that I come up with are a bit of a bodge, but nobody's ever told me that I've done it wrong or there's a correct way of doing it. Perhaps that's because I've never been a member of a, a model railway club or society or anything like that most of which I know I've learned for myself. Today I'm going to bridge this 10mm gap in model form as per this real photo. And I so wish this photo was mine, but it isn't. I'll leave a link to where I found it on the interweb. And I can think of at least one track design engineer that might think this is a really interesting photograph. My old Dremel died a dignified death a few days ago and I replaced it with a new cordless one. Now what I'm about to do you probably could do with some rail cutters but you'll end up doing a lot of filing. Because the rail joiners code 75 and code 100 are manufactured in a different way. I'm going to do this process twice. First, because I use code 75, we'll do code 100 a bit later on. With our double rail joiner, I'm going to cut half of one of them in, in half, if that makes sense. Then with an implement of your choice, mine is a Stanley blade, I'm just going to prise the end that we've just cut so it opens up the gap just a little bit. That will make it easier to slide our 10mm piece of rail into the rail joiner. You'll have to excuse my fingers, my manicurist is on holiday again. Now the rail did slide in quite easily, but before I put it into the joiner, I put it on a piece of emery cloth just to take a little smidge off the bottom and any burrs that it may have incurred while cutting. Once the camera can decide what it wants to focus on, thank you. Our 10mm piece of rail is now straddling both rail joiners. I was nearly tempted to solder it in place, but erred in the size of caution, just in case the solder run really down the side and then you wouldn't be able to attach any other rails to it. I then chopped the other side of the rail joiner in half and prized the gap open again using the same method as before. We're now ready to install our little bit of handiwork. Attached to one end of the point, we'll slide it on to the other point, then attach the diamond crossover to make sure it fits correctly. Even if it's the wrong way to do what I've just done, I still think <laughs> it looks pretty good. And with the diamond crossover attached at the other end, I'm going to call that a successful mission. Now this problem will occur with your Code 75 or Code 100 rail, because essentially the points are the same size. So let's now see if we can do the same thing with Code 100 track. As I said earlier, we have to do this one in a slightly different way because Code 100 Rail joiners are manufactured in a slightly different way, meaning that our 10mm piece of rail is just a little bit too big to fit in a single rail joiner. So what we'll do is we'll get two rail joiners 
and cut them to about three quarter lengths each making a super long one and it's a lot easier to cut the rail joiner when it's attached to a piece of rail I use a, an old piece of set track again we'll have to open up the cut end because it will have closed up again so we need to do that first and then with our two three quarter length rail joiners we can then slide our 10 millimeter piece of rail into one of them and then into the other then we can put our 10 millimeter spacer in between our two fixed rails it's gotten just a little bit off center here but a little bit of adjustment and it goes straight back in i would on this one be tempted to solder the joint completely so we've just done a gap that's about 10 millimeters and anything larger than 10 millimeters i'd think about doing it a different way I've used a similar spacer method when I've cut flexi track just a little bit too short and anything from about three to five millimeters will fit in in between a single rail joiner quite nicely and because these spacer rails joints are so short there should really be no loss of electrical connection again I suppose you could if you wanted to solder the joint which would be better that's it for this one i'll hopefully be back behind the desk with some wagon kits or other kit like things soon in the meantime thanks for watching see you next time